Bay Chats. Can I just say, there's no point doing whatever we've come here to do because the Aston is by far the best of the three. If you want the most expensive but the slowest, and it is, I yeah. can confirm it's because I've brought some stuff with me. I believe my car is faster and more powerful. Yeah, Aston Martin, 167,851 pounds, uh, as opposed to 143, 149, and it's, uh, oh, it's the slowest, 191. Um, I think you'll find that Anne Widdicombe has more qualifications than Cheryl Cole, but... What's the point you're making? You wouldn't get it. Look, if as, do you know Nietzsche? Yes. Nietzsche said if something can be defined, then it mm -hmm. loses its power. You look at these figures. Yes, 0 to 60, OK? 3.8 for the Ferrari, 4 for the Lamborghini, 4.3 for that. Hmm. Doesn't matter. You're oh. defining it here. You're defining that. It as if you're comparing 0 to 60 times, doesn't it? Then it really does matter doesn't. which one is... Which yes. is on, the most beautiful? The Lamborghini. The Ferrari. Beautiful. Lamborghini. The Ferrari. The Lamborghini. You're not going to claim that that is beautiful. Depends. Also has the best engine. Of what relevance that, is that? That engine, it's, uh, it's the one that's uh, two Ford Mondeo engines now. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. That's, that's right. So it's like when you pull up next to somebody in a V6 Mondeo, you can say, I've got two of those. Yes. Does it say together. twin Mondeo engines on the back? Wow, that's really got some... <laughs> Our highbrow debate was cut short by the arrival of a challenge. With the Italian V8 having thrown down the gauntlet, it was time for the British V12 to pick it up. If he crashes, it would be a unique and special death. Dusty as well. Yeah. Still here. Oh, yeah, it's, it's quite the a slight start. corner that you yeah. don't see. No, you don't see much at all. What? Richard Hammond, 89. Yeah. The massive V12. Yeah. With the noisy bloke in it. Yeah. 90. 90? Yeah. So this is one better. One better, according to our pretty, I would say, industry standard test now. Yeah. Finally, it was the turn of the Lambos V10. Does he know which pedal to push? Sounds menacing, it's great. Oh, it's off. 87. Invigorating, isn't it? That's quite dusty, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is very dusty. So, you want to hear the results? Is it poor? Richard Hammond, 89. The V12 Aston Martin, 90. Oh. Your V10, 90. Well done, sir. It's a tough... We'll have to do it again. Why don't we just keep driving around here for a light hours? Somebody will tell us off eventually and make us move. I'm about to perform an overtaking manoeuvre in the 552 horsepower Lamborghini Gallardo. As we reached the outskirts of Bucharest, we stopped for a filler. Let's have some very good petrol. Primesti. Thank you. Did you try your uh, Romanian on him? Or her? Or her? They didn't have any tangy, zesty orange drink, but they've got that. Intense oh, energy. Burn. burn. What is this? This not a can of petrol, is it? <laughs> it tastes like it's good for you. No. Ooh. You can run an Aston on this stuff. Just pop round the back of the garage for a, <clears throat> a wee, uh, and I'm no gardener, but I think I know what that is. 
And whilst Jeremy had been investigating the Bob Marley tree, Richard and I had bought him a present. Now we know where he lives, the world's unluckiest man. Returning home from market, perhaps, having sold the family turnip. And he has a crash. And when he talks to his insurers, oh, sir, what into? A tractor, a tree, a turkey, maybe? No, a Lamborghini. Oh, God. So there I was worrying that my Rebenton style nose would get knocked off by a big lump of rock and it ends up being stoved in by some blind local. This is what you look for in a good Grand Tourer. I'm on the world's worst surfaced road, and I'm barely wobbling. Look. Smooth. My suspension incorporates dampers with magnetic fluid in them, which means the car can feed electricity into them and change their characteristics. All that F1 technology coping with rough, barely made roads. This thing's just eating it up. However, in my hardcore supercar... God, it's terrible. I've been in second gear and about 10, 12 miles an hour for miles. Oh, please let it end. As the last of my spine collapsed, we pulled over. What are you doing? I've got a wasp just plaguing me. Never, never mind wasps. 60% of Europe's bears live in this region of Romania. Six and a half thousand of them. Really? Bears? Yep, bears. Where? Well, like these woods right These here. woods here is where bears live. What sort of bears? I think they're brown bears. Are they the ones that, if you see one, you don't run, you stay perfectly still? You just stay like that? Or do you run? You do one of those things. You either run or stay still. But it's OK, because the roof on my Aston Martin goes up three seconds faster than it does on a standard DB9. It's up. That'll yeah. put them off, because yeah, they know that. cloth over your head. Ooh, he's in a bag. What'll I do? I've got a metal roof, so when my roof's up, I'm in a proper car. Yeah, you've got to build it. It takes hours to no, get your metal. it doesn't. It's quick. You will be eaten. You'll just be a skeleton by the time it's over your head. No. You... Is my roof quicker than your roof? No, it's I reckon much... it is. No, it's not. It'll be you are going to be Paddington's lunch. Let's have a roof race. My colleagues agreed that this was a vital consumer test. Ready, steady, back! Ah! Come on! No Hammonds hasn't even begun! Yeah, and I'm already yeah, halfway yeah, close! Oh, yeah, here it comes. I'm gonna win. The bear is lolloping towards us, wondering who to eat. Come on, come on, come on, come on! Hi, bear. Last little bit. Windows are going up. And we're done. I win! I win! Clearly I win! And I'm done! James, you're bear food, mate. James, Absolute you are Winnie the Pooh's aperitif. <laughs> mate, you've, I'm Did sorry. I lose? Were you, oh, yes. Well, were you giving the bear a lift? What were you doing? Who won out of us two? Me. No, me. Well, Did you, yeah. Uh, this window isn't up. No, I put it down. I had time for it to go up, and then I put it down. Hammond was declared the winner. So we continued our climb into the mountains to search for the fabled road. I liked the Dacia Sandero. It was honest and simple. It was refreshing. It's broken. I know you're supposed to give and not count the cost, but it was 4,000 euros. Eventually, we pulled over for a spot of Romanian lunch, where, for a change, Jeremy had an opinion on something. Can I just say as well, James? Yeah. You brought the wrong car. I'm not interested. No, but it's true. It isn't We're true. To be used What's wrong with it? Because it's, it's a supercar. Super These oh, are proper no. cars. Are proper cars. They've got boots at the back, engines at the front. They're proper cars. But they're also they're the one step up from the Mercedes SL or BMW 6 Series. Yeah. They're that exactly sort of right. car, not that. 
So what can't I do in that car that you can do in yours? You're going to be less comfortable in that than we are. And you can't drive around without looking slightly like you're trying to imagine you're on a racetrack, which you're not, you're behind a lorry in Romania. And every time you want to put a suitcase in it, you're going to have to lift the front up and you're going to get dirty hands. I can't drive around without looking as if I think I'm on a racetrack, in says that, the man yeah. in the Ferrari, who spent their it's, whole life GT, going on about it's it's taking manoeuvres. That's the point. Nobody remember cares the... about that. Nobody looks, oh, yeah, well, that's a Ferrari, but actually it's a GT car. Do you remember it? Georgians and Victorians went on grand tours in yes. northern Italy? Did they go on sports horses or long loping horses? This would be good. They went on the train? Yeah. Well, I don't think Georgians did. Well, OK. Well, so they went... They would, you wouldn't go on a sports horse. They would go on a comfortable carriage. Not like, eh, because that's the whole point. This, they're grand tour. We're on a grand tour. Of... I'm having a grand time in my Lamborghini. But isn't that for enjoying, really, racetracks and really fast over And this road roads, we're going to. Which I'll be probably perfect. do some of that as well, if I had one at home. A bit of OK, fair actually. enough. But I'm perfectly happy with it. I know I, I'm going to have I'd a... I'd like to agree with you, but you're talking rubbish. I'm going to have... We're not. Everybody watching at home will say, he's brought a supercar. Yes, I have. But it's a perfectly usable one. But if I was going to bring a supercar, I would have brought... That, I actually. I brought that, actually, as well. <laughs> yes, but, but that's not the idea. I want one of these. I bloody love it. that these cars are spectacular here. You'd expect that. It's that they got here. <laughs> Fifteen years ago, Aston Martin, Lamborghini and Ferrari were bywords for fragility. Not anymore. Nothing rattled off, nothing dropped off, nothing fell apart. All three made it across some of the roughest roads I've ever seen, through remote gypsy villages and up Romanian mountain passes. Absolutely amazing.